the Cape Elizabeth Town Council for the 99 to 2000 session. The first, uh, my name is Joe Graff. I am not the chair of this new town council. I'm the chair of the last town council and have been requested to uh, be chair until the new chair is elected tonight. Um, the first order of business is to swear in the newly elected town council members and the newly elected school board members. Madam Clerk. Thank you. No, Henry, go on the other side. Yeah. Get the candidates. It will support the Constitution. It will obey the laws of the United States and of the state of Maine. That I will, in all respects, observe the provisions of the Charter and ordinances of the town of Cape Elizabeth and statutes of the state of Maine and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Congratulations. And now, if we can have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Next item is uh, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Since I am now a citizen, I actually get to participate in this part of the program. Uh, I would like to say a few words. First, I'd like to apologize for not being at the concluding town council meeting of my term. I was in, ba in Caribou trying a case and simply could not get here. Uh, that's the only meeting I missed, and I felt very badly about it. That said, though, I am proud of a few other things that happened uh, during the time that I was on the council and chair of the town council. First, I am very proud to have served with Bill Jordan. Uh, Bill Jordan is an institution in this town, and I will remember having had the opportunity to be on the town council with him. I'm also uh, proud of the fact that, in my view, and obviously it's biased, in the last three years, it was a forward-looking town council. We purchased the Gulf Crest property, which I've said before, I believe, is one of the things that will ensure that this town stays livable and stays as a town that we can all be proud of. I'm also proud of some things that I can't claim any credit for except that they happened when I was on the town council, like the beach to beacon race and many, many other things. It was uh, a time when I believe the quality of life in this community did not deteriorate and I don't think anybody can ask for much more than that. 
And lastly, I'm proud of the fact that when I was on the town council and chair of the town council, I tried very hard to make sure that we maintained our town manager form of government here, where the town council members are not selectmen, they're councillors. We have a town manager that is in charge of operational issues and runs the town on a day-to-day -to -day basis, and the town council is a policy board in accord with our town charter. I was proud of the fact that we remained consistent to the provisions of the town charter uh, during the time that I was chair and prior to that when I was on, just on the council. Now, I'm also thankful for many things that have happened in the last couple of years. People, uh, if you're a politician, there's always, and I'm not, I mean, there's always these slogans in the last election uh, with Bill Clinton, it was, we all heard the uh, phrase, it's the economy, stupid. Well, I thought about what makes Cape Elizabeth the great place it is to live. And the more I thought about it, the clearer the answer became. It's the people. We just have tremendous people in this town. And it starts, uh, it starts with the town manager. We have, in my opinion, the best town manager in the state of Maine. We're very fortunate here in Cape Elizabeth to have Mike McGovern, and it was a privilege serving with him. But it's not just Mike. There are tremendous employees in this town. <clears throat> I got to know a lot of the employees, and I just became more and more impressed with the professionalism, the dedication, and the absolute competence of the department heads and all the individuals that work for this town. We have a superb labor force. They do a great job. And we, as the citizens of this town, are the beneficiaries. Next, I'd like to thank all those people in this town that have given so much of their own time and energy for governmental and municipal functions. You don't have any idea how much time is volunteered in this town until you have an opportunity to sort of see it all in the big picture. It's just incredible the number of people who donate hundreds and thousands of hours, all so that the citizens of this town can have a better quality of life. It's not just on the town side, either. When I say town employees, I mean all town employees. I just had the opportunity to be a chaperone at Project Graduation. And for those of you that have not met our high school principal, Peter Dawson, you should. He is a wonderful educator and just an absolutely wonderful individual. And he just epitomizes to me the dedication and hard work of all the individuals who are associated with our educational effort here in Cape Elizabeth. I'm also thankful for uh, having an opportunity to serve with the past, current uh, town council members. I truly believe that uh, the time people give to be uh, members of the town council, members of the school board, is time that they could very well be doing other things. And each and every person who does this job, I truly believe, does so with a sense that they want to serve the community. That doesn't mean that everybody always agrees about everything or everybody approaches everything the same way, but I know everybody comes to this job with the same heart. I'd also like to thank, the, in advance, the, the future council members. 
uh, and the future school board members, <clears throat> you are upholding, in my view, uh, tradition of having wonderfully competent elected officials here in Cape Elizabeth, and my congratulations to all of you. And last, and probably most important, I'd like to thank my family. Um, it's, it takes a decent amount of time to do any amount of public service, and it's always your family who gets shortchanged in a way. And between trying to run a law firm and being on the chair of the town council, uh, I at times feel that uh, my family did get the short end, and I certainly uh, am hopeful of rectifying that. Now, many people have asked me, are, are you glad you did this, Joe? And my answer has never varied. I am thrilled that I had an opportunity to serve this town, uh, and I'm also thrilled to turn it over to others. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, I have a few short things to do before the uh, election of a new town council chair. The first uh, is presentations, and since this is my absolute most favorite thing to do anyway, uh, I don't mind it a bit. So let me go over to Mike. The first thing we'd like to do is recognize some of our committee chairmen uh, for the last year and present them with plaques. First is David Sear, who is chair of the Pool Building Committee. David, come on up. On behalf of the town council, thank you very much. It was an absolute thankless job, but I don't believe anybody could have done this job better than you did. Thank you very much. Those are kind words, considering we were over budget by $400,000. <laughs> but uh, ho hopefully we'll see you all in November when the pool opens. Thank you. <laughs> Tom LaProd. Tom was the uh, chairman of the Telecommunications Facilities Task Force. This, uh, again, was one of those task forces that I don't think got an incredible amount of publicity, and there certainly wasn't a ton of personal glory attached to this. That's for sure. <laughs> but, but this epitomizes what individuals in this town are willing to do for the benefit of everyone. And Tom, it's with real appreciation that I give you this plaque and thank you for your service. It was uh, a job that needed to be done and you were the man to do it. Thank you very much, sir. Mark Wilcox. Mark was the chairman of the planning board for 1998, and if you want to have a thankless job, but a very fulfilling job, right? Yes. Yes. Then express some interest in the planning board. Um, it really is a lot of work to be on the planning board. It's uh, uh, true public service, and Mark, you did a great job, and uh, on behalf of all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, thank you very much. Thank you. I guess this is my chance to put in a, a good, good word here. Uh, but in the course of the past couple of years, I've found that it's been truly amazing uh, that for a town of under 10,000 people, uh, any conceivable type of land use issue comes up on the table. And so many, in fact, that uh, I would say uh, we also uh, couldn't get by without the help of our town planner who kind of helps us sort it all out. Anyone can jump into the fray and come up to speed really quickly. And furthermore, uh, the best part of the job, I think, is in this town, uh, the issues don't get discussed just at planning board 
meetings, they come to the table from everyone in the town and from whatever uh, means and method possible, uh, we hear about it all and it's, it's just fantastic to have the entire town interested in what happens to the town. Thank you very much. And now let's have the, some representatives of the boys lacrosse team come on up. Come on, guys. This is a special presentation for me. Um, many of the seniors on the lacrosse team I've known since they were little boys and close to their family. Uh, many of the seniors are on a trip to the Allagash uh, this week, many with their fathers. It was a great lacrosse season. It was one of those events in town that helps bring the entire town together. Uh, you carried on a, a fine tradition, and I can hardly wait for next year. This is a uh, town re Cape Elizabeth Town Council resolution, Cape Elizabeth Boys Lacrosse, Main Principals Association Championship. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth Boys Lacrosse team recently captured their 10th consecutive Main Principals Association State Lacrosse Championship, and whereas a decade of excellence in boys lacrosse continues to bring the Cape Elizabeth team to center stage, and whereas the 11-3 championship victory over Wayne Fleet ended a 14-1 season, and North Yarmouth Academy is the only team to defeat the Capers during the regular season play, and that was revenged, whereas the coaching staff, parents, and supporters of this program should be proud of their ongoing efforts to support these young men now. Therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we join the entire Cape Elizabeth community in congratulating the Cape Elizabeth Boys Lacrosse State Champions, and we thank them for representing the town and school so well during the last decade. Congratulations, guys. All right. Councillors' reports and correspondence. Councillor Fritz? Yes. Um, there were two things that I wanted to report on just uh, briefly. One was I just wanted to um, congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust and their efforts this weekend to build a trail, a loop trail at the Hobstone um, piece of land that was purchased jointly by the land trust, the town, and um, residents of Hobstone and mem many members of the community for contributing. Um, it's a terrific trail. I was really impressed with what uh, 25 people, I think, participated. Some scouts and young people and members of the land trust, and they got it completed in the four hours on Saturday morning. And it, it's, so it's now available for people to, to use. So um, congratulations to the land trust. The other thing that I wanted to mention was the um, a report on the Household Hazardous Waste Day collection day that was held on May 22nd. Um, there were lots of members of the current recycling committee that helped with traffic uh, direction and, and members of the past recycling committee. It was, we had 286 cars that went through the collection facility and brought household hazardous waste to the facility, um, 270 of those were Cape residents. Um, I just want to mention some of the amount that was collected there. There was 10,000 to 12,000 uh, pounds of paint waste, aerosol cans, there were 800 pounds, 1,000 pounds of pesticides, 126 pounds of mercury waste, 20 pounds of nickel cadmium batteries, 
200 pounds of acidic materials, 30 pounds of alkaline materials, 3,000 pounds of non-regulated materials, and I think those were con probably considered non-hazardous, so they were probably disposed of as regular waste. And then 550 gallons of flammables, 55 gallons of oil, and 100 gallons of antifreeze. Um, so I think it was a very successful day, and um, Clean Harbors is the, the chemical company that provided the services to take away the, the waste, and they were very impressed with this being the first time in this town and the first time in, for RWS that we had that many people participating, so it was a very good turnout. I was not able to go, and in this particular um, collection program, it's going to be going on through the summer and fall in different towns. And you have the ability to go to other towns if you miss the collection in Cape Elizabeth. So um, maybe we can put those dates on the website if they're not um, on the website at the present time, because you can go to those other days. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other counselors? Uh, Councillor Barry. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Briefly. At the, <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about me being chair, not your comments. <laughs> I'm very grateful for that. Uh, <laughs> the um, uh, facilities to, uh, prior to his departure for Singapore, where we hope he's not been kidnapped, uh, Michael McGovern sent me over to the Facilities 2000 Committee. And at the May 25th meeting, um, the uh, estimate for the new firehouse, which will be where the, the Public Works Department is now, is approximately a million dollars uh, over a period of time, $800,000 for labor and materials, and then they put 5% uh, for design contingency and, and the bid, and 5% for escalated cost allowance and engineering and furnishings, and uh, so that is estimated to run about a million dollars at the current uh, estimate that the engineers have come up with. And as far as the police station, they've had uh, a revision in their thinking, I think, on the committee because the engineers have estimated that uh, about a 9,000 square foot building where the present firehouse and police station are, that building will be made all into a, a, a police station. If that building as it is, is renovated, it will cost about a million three hundred thousand dollars in the estimate of the engineers. And if that is uh, demolished and replaced with another building, it will be only one million one hundred and fifty thousand. I shouldn't say one hundred, I, I shouldn't say only, <coughs> but uh, about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars less for a new building designed for a police station than it would be to renovate the existing one. So I think the committee is uh, they want to do it right because it's going to be there a long time and we're looking at uh, a 50-year, anyway, uh, construction over there. We hope that uh, we're, we're going to have the police station, the firehouse, and the, of course the public works uh, up in the new uh, Gullcrest property uh, next to the transfer station. So that's my report from the Facilities 2000 meeting for May 25th, where I was assigned by the manager. Uh, also, I'm on the County Budget Committee, uh, the Budget Advisory Committee. As uh, some of you have seen in the paper, the jail uh, needs guards. There are about 20 personnel short on uh, guards in the county jail, and uh, we're having meetings on that. There was a meeting scheduled for this week, but it was canceled. Uh, I guess people are busy in June, and uh, then another note from the county, uh, the jail has inmates who are non-violent and not dangerous, and uh, they are supervised by guards and would like to get out and earn some good time and maybe make uh, a little money at the county budget. It will not cost the town one penny, nothing. We've talked with the sheriff, and Bob Malley uh, has talked with the, uh, the sheriff and the uh, work release people, and uh, so they have planned to do some work on, at Fort Williams on a roof that uh, is going to save the town about $10,000 in, in labor expense, and we're very pleased <coughs> to work that out. So I've been working on some of these matters at the county level uh, as a delegate from the, uh, from the town council. Um, and 
uh, there are a lot of uh, committees or uh, chores, as, as you pointed out, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the council members do that are not on these uh, standing committees. And uh, I know that uh, Councilor Fritz has given about three days and four days of her own time to go to Baltimore, Maryland, to go over to Detroit, Michigan, and go back on a bus to Ohio this past week. Before we saw each other at the graduation, she had inspected some of these regional waste facilities because they're uh, putting a new one out for bid, and she went with the group personally, and I think she's to be commended for her dedication to that project. Uh, that is uh, the extent of my reports, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the opportunity to work with you. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Our two new counselors. Go ahead. Um, I uh, attended the Greater Portland Council of Governments meeting on the 8th, and the only real news there is that they have now uh, elected a seven-person steering committee. Uh, they've had pro problems getting people on the executive committee to attend uh, in numbers sufficient to get anything done. And so uh, they felt that a solution was to have a seven-person steering committee. Uh, that exec the executive committee will meet quarterly, and the steering committee will meet every other month. And they hope to facilitate uh, the work of COG in that way. Also, a new president uh, of COG was elected. Her name is Jennifer Connolly of Westbrook. Um, that's my report. Thank you. Councilor Roberts. Well, on a more somber note, on Saturday, I was able to attend the funeral for John Civilly. Uh, John, as many of you may be aware, had been a volunteer with the fire department since 1960. J Councilor Groff earlier mentioned Billy Jordan as an institution. Uh, John has been an institution with the fire department and he is going to be uh, sorely missed. There was a good turnout at the funeral. Uh, both Phil McGoldrick and Jim Murray gave excellent eulogies and I wish that their presentations could have been taped to uh, put on the cable TV for other people to uh, hear them and appreciate what was said about John. I would like to offer a moment of silence for John on behalf of the council and ask that perhaps the council can do something in recognition of his years of service. So if we could have a moment of silence for John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Could I uh, tail on that? Um, I work in or volunteer for the fire department. Obviously, it was around John a lot. Um, unfortunately, I was in Montreal until today, was not able to attend the service. Um, but John epitomizes what Joe was talking about earlier about the citizens of this town. John probably put in at least 40 hours a week over at the fire station for nothing, for free, gave back to the town. And uh, several years ago, we recognized that community service by awarding him um, uh, the Gould Award, which is a uh, service to the community recognition reward award uh, by the town council. And uh, I couldn't uh, ditto enough what uh, Jack said, that he will be sorely missed across the street and throughout the community. Uh, Councilor Barry. Just one postscript to uh, the county uh, that I have uh, delivered to the, the town clerk, uh, a, a memo a report of corrections officer wage and salary review committee at the county level and I meant to mention this before, I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, that will be on uh, the web page, and uh, it will be available either in the town office or the library if, if citizens want to review that uh, at the county level. Thank you. Therein is the reading of my presentation. Any other counselors? I got so long-winded in my presentation that I failed to ask if there's any members of the audience that wishes to discuss uh, an item not on the agenda tonight. That's a tradition we've had here for a long time, and I would hate for any meeting to go by where we didn't honor that tradition. Um, town manager's report. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Yes. I do have two things this evening that I know um, that Michael would, would want me to talk about. The first is about John um, civilly and his unexpected passing last Wednesday. John did volunteer 40 plus hours for the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department under uh, Chief McGoldrick and the late Chief Donald Webster. Um, he was notorious for his impeccable record keeping file system, keeping track of the supplies in the fire department. He did join the fire department and rescue in 1960. He is a past uh, captain 
of the rescue. He was appointed deputy chief in 1987. And as Council McGinty said, he is a 1995 recipient of the Ralph Gould Award for his community services. Um, this gentleman was a gentleman. Um, he had a heart of gold. He would do anything for anyone. And I think most of us remember John and have stories that will make us laugh or even bring a smile to our face. Um, he will truly be missed by his fellow fighter fighters. Um, in the words of Chief McGoldrick at the service on Saturday, John was not a member of the fire department. He was the fire department. Um, I'd also like the time to take the recognition to um, recognize the engine companies who paid tribute to John during the service and at the wake um, Friday evening, the public safety personnel that participated, police rescue, wet team, fire police, um, and the companies that covered for us, Scarborough, Portland, and Freeport that I'm aware of. I apologize if I miss any other communities. And I thank the other communities for their participation and their tribute to John as well. To John's family, our thoughts and prayers are with you, his wife Barbara, his daughters Susan and Caroline, his granddaughters, his sisters. Um, I remember one particular thing at the service was his granddaughter wrote a letter to her, her grandfather after she found that he passed away. And she remembers the spaghetti dinners on Sunday nights, the big ice cream treats after someone won a certain game or card game. And, um, and always John was the first one when they had a, a scrape or, or something, he came to their rescue. And, and that just reminds me that John will be missed by so many people in so many different ways. So again, our thoughts and prayers are with, with the Civilly family. Secondly, uh, Memorial Day Parade. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers and the participants. Again, it was a great success. Uh, Jimmy Murray did a wonderful job, as always, organizing it. I just have a request. Jimmy turned down the heat next year. It was terribly hot walking up Route 77. Um, but again, it was great. We thank the U.S. Coast Guard for the Jayhawk Rescue Helicopter, Police Color Guard, Fire Department Color Guard, Public Safety Personnel, Lions Club, the town officials, um, Patrick Outwin for the bagpipes, the middle school band, the school and community groups. And again, I apologize if I forget anyone. I hope I did remember everyone. So that again was a great event and we find, we thank everyone and we thank Engine 2 for the open house that followed um, the ceremony on Memorial Day. Thank you. Next, uh, the minutes of the May 10th, 1999 meeting. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? I still move. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Oh, I can't vote. Seven. <laughs> Seven to nothing. We're moving to item number one is uh, the election of a town council chairman for 1999-2000. Is there a nomination? Um, Councilor Chairman, uh, I'd like to nominate Penny Carson for, uh, to serve as chair for 1999. A second no nomination. It's been moved and seconded that uh, Penny Carson be the town council chair for 1999 to 2000. Is there a motion to close nominations? I move the nominations cease. Second. It's been moved and seconded and the nominations are closed. All in favor? <laughs> it's unanimous. <laughs> Madam <laughs> Chair. Thank you very much. I am Don't thrilled to turn over my to you. Well, I have one very quick official responsibility here, and this is a plaque to Joe Groff for the time he's given to the town council and for the time he has uh, spent as chairman of the town council. I, I would like to say some words, but he has actually already said them so much better than anybody could have said them when he opened his comments tonight. But we know the time, we all know the time that is spent to, to uh, serve the community, and the citizens have been well served in Cape Elizabeth by the time that, by the time Joe has put into this job, and we really appreciate it, Joe. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Godspeed and best wishes. <laughs> yeah, I'll come back and see it. Well, I thank the council very much for their confidence um, that I can't put this little thing back on the speaker. <laughs> 
Um, but we would like to move on since it is getting a little bit later. I would like, to, I had planned to open the council meeting if I were elected with some comments, but it is true that Joe Groff did say some really wonderful things about our town and our citizens and the people who serve in our community, and so I can't do any better than that, so I'll just get on with the meeting. Um, we are on item number two. two, adoption of the council rules, which were in your packet. Um, my understanding is that there has been no changes to the council rules. I'm sure you've all read them. So I would entertain a motion. Uh, John McGinty. Um, Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the town council rules as presented. I'll second that motion. Seconded by Councillor Barry. Is there any more discussion? Not. Um, we'll vote. Okay. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Seven to nothing. Town council rules for this upcoming year have been passed. Item number three. I would like at this time to take three. items number three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten as a group. However, I would like to explain to the people uh, who do not have an agenda or those uh, watching in the TV audience that these are appointments of committee chairs within the town council framework. And various councillors have agreed or have volunteered to be chairs of those various committees. And we will vote one time for all the slate that's put forward, but I would like somebody to read the different items for the TV audience so that they could see who is chair of the different committees. Councilor Barry? Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, Chairperson, uh, I would like to... Chairman uh, is... Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, read, starting with uh, item three, mm -hmm. appointment of the Finance Committee, Ruth McClary Watson as chairman, and uh, the council as a whole to serve as the Finance Committee. Item four, Appointment was Ordinance Committee, Carol Fritz Chairman, John McGinty and Henry Berry members. Item five, appointment of the Appointments Committee, Ann Swift Cayetta as Chairman, John Roberts and uh, Ruth McClary Watson as member. Item six, election of representative to the Maine Municipal Association Legislative Policy Committee, and that's Councillor Watson. And item seven, Appointment of representative and alternate to RWS, the Waste uh, Service Inc. Uh, Board of Directors. Uh, Councilor Fritz as representative and Ann Swift Cayetta as the alternate. Item eight, <clears throat> appointment of representative to Greater Portland Council of Governments Executive Committee. And Councilor Ky uh, Swift Cayetta is going to uh, be that uh, representative. Item nine, appointment of representative and alternate to Greater Portland Council of Governments General Assembly. Uh, Councilor Fritz as representative and John Roberts as her alternate. Uh, item 10, appointment of representative to the PACS Policy Committee. Uh, town Manager Michael McGovern will be appointed for that. I think those are the items from 3 through 10, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. And I move their passage in, on bank. Is there a second? I'll second. second. John Mc Councilor McGinty has seconded. Is there any discussion on these appointments? If not, all those in favor? Thank you, that carries unanimously. These are some housekeeping items that we need to do at the very first, first meeting of our fiscal year. The, so, uh, Chairman, the, the representative for the county committee is not one of our standing committees. That's done by the county. So that's right. In case anybody asked about that. wondered why you were reporting on that before. Well, I just want to keep the council and the people in the town informed. <laughs> that's right. Um, Item number 11, public comment and action upon renewal of malt, spiritus, and Venice liquor license for the Good Table, Inc. at 527 Ocean House Road. And I would like to turn this over to the clerk. Thank you very much. In your packet this evening, you do have the renewal application for the Good Table. I have reviewed it and feel that everything is in order and ready for your action this evening. Mr. Christopoulos, the owner of the Good Table, is here. If you have any questions at this time, staff recommends that you approve the renewal liquor application. Councilor McGinty. Um, this was run by the police department? Yes, it was. And he, is, he doesn't have a problem with that? Right? No, he does not. So moved. It's been, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the renewal for the license for the Good Table Restaurant. Any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much, Mr. Kostopoulos. <clears throat> Item number 12, 
Consideration of technical amendments to the adoption motion of the FY2000 budget. Uh, we have had some change to, changes to the budget. I'm I, not too sure if I can explain this uh, clearly to the public. Um, I think one of the things <clears throat> that would probably clear it up is that at the meeting where we met with the school board, the town council and the school board uh, to go over the 2000 budget was recommended by the town council that uh, $70,000 be cut from the school budget and we also at that time did not know the exact amount of the state subsidy so that when we voted on the budget as it was, we, or when we had the consensus on the budget, we didn't know the exact figures because we did not know especially what the state subsidy budget was going to, uh, amount of money was going to be. But that all is in now and we do have the budget in front of us and it is time for us to act on it. Uh, town Clerk, please. Thank you. Just um, for the Council's information, those at home, the information that we were provided from the state was that we would receive for fiscal year 2000 an additional $4,353. So the information in your packet this evening reflects that, that amount over fiscal year 99. Okay. And I would like to thank Paulina Portria, our business manager. She was kind enough to stay this evening. I appreciate that, Pauline, if the Council has any questions for her. Okay, we'll open up for discussion. There are different items. Uh, um, maybe the way to do it is that each order has a different amount and has been impacted differently by the uh, revenue and by the, yeah, by the revenue so that we'll take each order, maybe one at a time, if that's the way the council would like to do that or if you like to, I mean, I prefer to pass the budget as a whole. Let, I, I recommend we pass it as a whole. Okay. How I would move it. Okay. I'd just like to make a clarification. We have already passed the budget. We're mandated to do that by the charter. Right. These are technical amendments to that, That's which correct. simply clarify what we did back in May. That is just correct. Just so that people don't think we're redoing the budget again. That That's is not the case. We're just plugging in the, the actual figures now that we weren't sure we we're going to have. That. That's correct. Okay. Good. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd just like to make a comment about um, uh, how the school board um, appropriated the $70,000. There was a lot of discussion at our last um, town council meeting, and I think that it would behoove us to talk just a little bit about um, how they went about uh, cutting their, their budget by $70,000. They just decreased their expenditures by $18,500, and then they increased their revenues by going uh, into undesignated surplus for an additional $51,500. So the total use of undesignated surplus for this current year budget is $337,312 of undesignated surplus as well as a, a cut of $18,500 which is uh, based on a decrease in projected enrollment in kindergarten so it's half a kindergarten position. So um, just as clarification as, as to where that, that all was, um, was taken from. I think that's important. Thank you. We, we need a second. <coughs> Did you make, you made a motion? Motion. Before? Second. And you seconded it, okay. John? Um, I'd just like to let the, the public know that um, in May, when we were looking at the original budget, um, the tax rate would have gone up 47 cents, and now it's only going to go up 14 cents. As I commented back then, this being the first tax increase I've ever voted for, that <laughs> all, all of this money is going towards capital improvements, towards um, the Gulf Crest Farm purchase and um, sure. improvements there, the swimming pool, um, and the and the first down payment on the public works building. Um, so as I said at that time, we're maintaining the level of services without increasing taxes for services. All this is going to capital improvements, which, as somebody commented, I think Henry commented, hopefully will last into the next 50 years. So I think it's a good investment. Thank you. Are there any more comments? And Madam Chair, I, I attended the uh, budget workshop meeting. In fact, I had attended all of them this spring, I believe. And I just wanted to take this moment to thank the school board at the last workshop. I think they looked very carefully at every ex possible expenditure, and they considered everything very seriously. And uh, I just would like to thank them for their efforts, because I thought they did yeoman duty on this one. Thank you. Are there any more comments? You ready to move the question? All those in favor? It is unanimous to pass. Thank you very much. We're on to a new year.
Item number 13, action recommending a public hearing on proposed updates of the fire protection and prevention ordinance, the construction ordinance, and the zoning ordinance. We are, we are at this time going to set a public hearing date, but I will ask if Councilor McGinty has any comments to make. He was at that time head of the ordinance committee. I don't have any additional comments to except the same. I mean, there are a number of them. This is technical. They're all technical in nature. They're just adjustments to what was originally in the, um, from the zoning ordinance rewrite committee. Um, we found where one area of the, the, of the ordinance didn't exactly match the other, so we just kind of matched them up. Um, the only, we also had a workshop on this um, so that all the counselors can understand um, that what types of changes are in here and have an opportunity to discuss them. Um, the only major change that came out of that workshop uh, was in the um, in a zoning, zoning ordinance amendment, elder care facility standards, and we are adding where an elevator is required by the building code. The elevator shall be of sufficient size to accommodate the town emergency rescue stretcher as determined by the fire chief. And that's been a significant issue um, being on the rescue. It certainly <laughs> impacts me personally, but um, it is a significant issue with some of our new buildings. So, um, and I don't, I see Maureen is here, if that's why, are you here for this item? If there's any questions? I, unless the counselors have any questions, I'd, I'd move to set this to um, a public hearing on uh, July 12, 1999 at 7.30 at the town hall. I'll second, second. that. It's been moved and seconded. I don't really know which one of you seconded it first, but it's been moved and seconded that we set the public hearing for July 12, 1999 at 7.30 here in the town hall for a public hearing on these ordinance, the technical amendments to the ordinances. All those in favor? <clears throat> Thank you. It's unanimous. Can I just make a clarification? Yes. That's technical amendments to the zoning ordinance, I mean, but so also updates on the fire protection and prevention ordinance, the construction ordinance, and, and the, the flood, ordinance. flood zone ordinance. Right. Yes. Thank you. Item number 14, we have a report in our packet. Um, from the Conservation Commission. I find this a, a very interesting report, and uh, I, would, I would like to ask Bob Harrison if he could have any comments he could make before the Council went into some discussion about this. Bob Harrison is the Conservation Chair. We also have Nat Clifford here and Peter Rand here, who I assume are here to answer questions. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I would like to uh, make my comments very brief, but I'd like to point out uh, in your packet there is a list of six recommendations. I think three of these bear specific comment. The first one I will read because I think it's highly significant. Uh, a little bit of background first. This primarily um, came to our attention because of a, a grant that is uh, requiring action and uh, forced us to look at this uh, entire situation a little bit more comprehensively than we had in the past. So the first recommendation in your packet specifies action regarding uh, an easement to be negotiated with the Spray Corporation that would give access um, from the end of Fenway Road to what is uh, termed in this uh, document the boat launch area on the east shore of Great Pond. The point that I want to make in this recommendation is as it's stated in your report is that uh, the obtaining an easement, I'll just read from this, the obtaining an easement for the use of this existing trail to the boat launch area would provide shore access while requiring neither acceptance of the trail improvement grant nor an easement for the use of Jordan land for the trail to continue to Alwise Brook. Because this easement to the boat launch area would satisfy the state mandate for public access to Great Pond, it should be given the highest priority. I think that's highly significant that it is uh, separate from the other issues. Uh, the second one that I want to comment on specifically is recommendation five. The town should exert maximum effort to obtain the trail easement necessary for permanent legal use of the existing trail between the boat launch area and Alwise Brook. Uh, this is a trail that I think is well known to the town. It is uh, very heavily used, but it is not legally available to the town because of the, uh, uh, the fact that it is all on private land or all nearly all on private land from the uh, uh, nearly all on Jordan land from the boat launch area of uh, Great Pond. Um, it's my understanding from reviewing this situation that the town has never made an official approach to the Jordans with respect to uh, obtaining an easement 
and uh, part of the recommendation is that the town pursue that for the first time. And then the, uh, the third thing that I feel is appropriate to comment on is um, item number six. Conservation Commission should be integrated into the trail and boardwalk design process by continuing consultation with the town engineers. I feel that we have uh, reviewed the situation carefully. We are um, unanimous in the recommendations that are made and feel very strongly that uh, we would like to stay involved in the process and uh, that that involvement would allow us to develop the facility uh, to best suit the town and also to minimize the conservation impacts. I'm available for questions if anyone has, anyone has one. Yes, Councilor McGinty. Um, this grant, uh, I, as I indicated earlier, I've been out of town. I just got back about 4 o'clock this afternoon. I didn't have time to fully research this. Where, where is this grant coming from? And, and, is, and was it to the town or was it to the, concert, the land trust? Con I mean, the, who, the, grant is, the grant is to the town. I think Maureen has a significant amount of information on this. I feel like I'm not the, the person that's best qualified because uh, to some extent I've come in at a, at a late date. This grant has been subject of discussion for longer than I've been Conservation Commission Chair. Could the uh, uh, town yes. planner answer that? Good evening. The original grant application was written in 1993. Uh, we were not funded originally through the grant, but there were citizens in the town who felt very strongly this was an important project, who lobbied uh, the main Department of Transportation, and eventually uh, we were funded through a highway grant to build this boardwalk. So it's, it's a little unusual. Um, we're up against the time frame of the, the expiration of the... I believe our experience has been in the past that when you're awarded a grant that you should spend the money as soon as possible <laughs> or it tends to disappear. So six, there's six no... Six years is probably long enough to wait is what you're <laughs> <Yeah>. saying. <clears throat> so there's no specific time frame, but, but the, the goal is that it, if the town is interested in accepting the grant and using the money for a project that we should probably do that sooner rather than later. Okay. Thank you. Could I ask the yes. planner, how much is the grant? How much do we have to... I believe we, we have a, a match involved, but it's approximately $42,000. $42,000. And what's the match, then? If you give me a moment, I'll look it up. Any other questions? We also have, if you read, when you read your packet, you see that not only um, <clears throat> can Bob Harrison speak, but that there's a comment in here about Dr. Rand's rec recommendation, if you'd like to sp ask him questions about that uh, boardwalk and trail issues that he's commented on. Why don't you come up and explain, Peter, about um, the idea that seems very common sense to me. Council members, Pete Rand, 1222 Shore Road. Uh, I'm here as an observer tonight. I've been on the periphery of this thing for, what is it, six years. It's like a ball in a pinball machine that was fired by the town up to the Department of Transportation back in 93. And since then, it's rocketed around in the Department of Transportation, and, and, and the machine was given a hip a couple of times to get it not to fall in the wrong hole. And, and tonight, finally, it's gotten down to the bottom where I, I hope with your help it will make the board light up. Uh, the original concept was to build a boardwalk that went from essentially Alewise Brook to, uh, to the Fenway Road uh, part of Great Pond because the, our access to the trails that were there were limited because they belonged to a private individual. And the, the green belt goes through there, but the only way to get the green belt really through there, at that, thinking at that time, was to go on Sprague, the, the Sprague pedestrian easement. But the Sprague pedestrian easement, in fact, is in the water. The, the, the pond has come up, and the boundary of the property that we would be able to put the walk on is right in the marsh. And so the concept was to build a boardwalk uh, and uh, the grant was, was approved finally uh, and the town now has it and it's been sitting there for a while and uh, now has come up for your consideration. The, the $42,000 figure is not sufficient to build a boardwalk all the way. One of the, one of the important elements of this grant is it has to be handicapped, the trail has to be handicapped accessible. 
And in order to do that, why that would require uh, uh, construction that would be beyond what would be uh, needed for a non-handicap uh, accessible uh, pathway. Uh, so in the one meeting I went to with the Conservation Commission and, and heard the discussion that, uh, about this, the, the, the better concept, I think it's reflected in the packet that you have, uh, is number one, as the Conservation Commission has, has recommended, is to get the access from Fenway Road to the, the pond. That's something that's been on the docket of the Conservation Commission since it was formed. I happened to be there when it was formed in 1972, and that was one of our prime goals at that time, and it certainly remains one of our prime goals. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the next aspect of it is that, in fact, uh, that is a wonderful wetland. There are some, some uh, marsh area right around where the road comes down to the pond, which would make a, a very nice place for, in fact, to the handicap to go on a boardwalk on in wheelchairs, if you will, out to an observation platform that would allow them to see the ducks, the geese, the ibis, and all of the other wildlife features that are there in Great Pond, and it would not be uh, uh, something that would be uh, uh, objectionable from a scenic point of view. If any of you have been to, for example, Lord Home Farm or places like that, that's the routine for allowing the public to see uh, wetland sites. And so, uh, I think that's about where I come down, down with it, and I, I, I hope that uh, uh, that can go forward. Peter, do you think that this, that, that plan would, will be acceptable, that we could indeed receive the grant? I mean, will that criteria of building that, uh, that handicapped? Um, yeah, I understand the grant is, is ours, but as long as we obey the rules of it, which are to make a handicap accept, acceptable. Okay, great. Thank you. Councillor? Yes. <laughs> Do you envisualize the, the access being pedestrian or driving cars down? Way back, way back again when, when the Great Pond condominium development occurred, the Conservation Commission obtained uh, an easement on the uh, one half of that property, about six acres, uh, between the condominiums and the pond. And in that, we at the time uh, uh, proposed and it was accepted to have a parking lot, or at least a parking area, and I won't say a lot, but a parking area at the, what is the, the sand pit location uh, down there. So that is already, the town has that easement and the town has the right to put uh, some sort of a parking facility. We certainly, I wouldn't envision a tarred parking facility, but uh, a, a, a place that cars can get to. The only access to that right now is either uh, on a pedestrian easement that the town holds from the Sprague Corporation that I think is either 12 or 13 feet wide that goes behind the houses on Fenway Road, right behind the, on the lot lines. The other access is right at the end of Fenway Road where there is uh, a uh, drainage easement uh, that goes, that continues the road to the Sprague property. And there would be needed to obtain from the Sprague property probably 200, 250 feet uh, of a right of way to continue Fenway Road, take a left and go to this parking area. So yes, I would invite a vision that automobiles with the handicap would be able to go to the parking lot, but then on the boardwalk, the wheelchairs could go down into the, to the uh, observation platform. Yes, Councilor Watson. Do we have any idea um, how amenable, amenable the Sprague Corporation and the Jordans would, would be to um, granting us an easement or a right of way? I can't speak for them. I think that we have reason to feel that they would be in favor of this. Okay. And how much of an easement or right away do, would we need from the Jordan property? We need about 200 to 250 feet from the Sprague Corporation. From the Jordans, do you have any idea how much of an easement we are looking at? How much? Uh, 12 feet or something. 12? I, think, I think we're probably looking at more like uh, 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet from the Jordans? Perhaps more. Length. Okay. In, in length or length? Oh, 2,000 feet from the northeast end of the pond down to Ilwise Park. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah. probably yeah. more or less right, yeah. Um, Councillor okay. Barry. Uh, if, if you uh, have a $42,000 budget uh, plus whatever the match is, is, is that enough to buy the materials to create the uh, boardwalk? I think you would define it. I think the, the amount of money would define what you would do with the, with the boardwalk, how far you would go with it. Well, are you including labor or expense yeah. in that construction? 
I don't, I don't envision this uh, being very long. I mean, I mean, you just go from the, from the dike that goes out there and maybe go up 100 feet and then make a platform. I'm Whatever the, there may be a source for some labor who could uh, build a, a boardwalk. Make it 200 feet. We can uh, <laughs> explore that. I'd be happy to work with uh, the sheriff on that. Yeah. <laughs> Councilor Roberts. And then Actually, my question would be for Maureen again, I believe. Maureen, under the terms of the uh, grant, if we put a handicapped accessible ramp as far as the boat launch and there was money left over, could we then use part of that money to improve the bridge over Alawife Brook and perhaps some planking to where it's now wet? Now, we, the town engineer and I met with a representative from the main department of transportation and uh, while they can't give us a specific standard for what they would consider a handicap accessible facility, they are adamant that it would have to be, any money you spend would have to be in a facility that's handicapped accessible. Before we start looking at numbers, and I, and I should caution you that we really don't have any hard numbers yet. Uh, the likelihood that this project is more expensive than the money we have is probably pretty high. Uh, but we don't have any specific numbers. We, we called one company and talked to them, and they're very much the high end of the boardwalk companies. Uh, if we were to hire labor, our original intent was to come up with a proposal and then send it out for bids. Uh, and then it would be up to whomever, how they chose to build it. And so we don't really have any hard numbers right now. But they made it very clear that um, because the phase one portion of Great Pond is not handicap accessible and realistically cannot be made handicap accessible without essentially eliminating an entire hillside, uh, we can't spend any money on that portion of the project. Uh, but to, it, if that answers your question, I, I would like to... I have a follow-up one for you as well. All right. If we can't put the money down at the other area then, would it be appropriate or reasonable to expect that we could take uh, a loop down toward the boat landing and then swing it back towards Alawife Brook as far as the dollars go with basically a cul-de-sac and then another grant later on continue that further? I believe that would definitely be an option. I, I, I think uh, from before I was hired here eight and a half years ago the intent was to have a link around the northern part of Great Pond to give the public a legal means to walk around Great Pond and enjoy it. Great Pond is the largest freshwater body in the town. Um, if you look at its regional importance, it's not very important. But for the town, it is very important. And the public access to that water body is pretty minimal right now. Um, uh, it was only after I was here a couple of years that the first real legitimate legal public access was created and that was created through a grant. And so what we've been trying to do is, is to continue to use grant monies whenever possible to build upon that. Um, the original grant we had, which we call phase one, was originally intended to do the entire trail. And it only did halfway, um, but at least we have half of it now. Um, I believe what the Conservation Commission is recommending is that all efforts be exhausted to find a way to purchase a legal pedestrian easement over the trail that currently exists over the Jordan property. Uh, however, if that is not available, certainly what you're suggesting could be an option. I would like to take this opportunity to answer your question about the, the amount of the grant, and I did want to check it because the original source that we applied for is different from what we finally got it from, and the matching amounts tend to vary. Uh, but the total amount of the grant is actually $46,200. Of that, we need a local share match of a minimum of uh, a minimum 20% match. However, a portion of that match can be in-kind services. So we, get, we have to show that we have spent at least $9,240 in either direct funds or uh, other types of contributions. Which could be labor? Absolutely. Are there any other questions? <clears throat> A historical note, I think, didn't uh, Conan versus Jordan, the Supreme Court of Maine in 1948, declare that there had to be for any uh, pond greater than uh, 10 acres uh, because of that uh, uh, pond, uh, there had to be public access to the pond? Yes, there is a state law that says that there has to be public access to every state water body. 
but, yeah, but figuring out exactly where that's supposed to be located probably will in, would entail some right. legal action. Mm -hmm. How, how, how big is the great pond? How many acres about? I should know. 131. 131, okay, so that's... Uh, Depending on the beavers. Depending <laughs> on the beavers in the year. <laughs> okay. Councilor McGinty. Um, Madam Chair, I'd um, make a motion to follow the recommendation um, of, the, I guess, the town manager and send this to the town manager for further research um, on the implementation of the commission's recommendations and that we have somewhere down the line after we get after he gets some more information that we have a workshop um, to further look into this when we get all the, the legal ramifications um, i mean i'm very interested in this i think they make a great case for what they want to do um, but i think that probably the town manager needs to you know get the details for us before we can take any action second, I'll second that motion That's a good idea seconded by councillor watson this one henry got to be <laughs> faster I'm doing the best I can. I'm open. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded that um, we accept the report <clears throat> of the Conservation Commission and that we turn it over to the manager for f further research and implementation and that possibly to set it again uh, at a, after we hear from the manager for a public hearing. Is that as we all for, heard? For a workshop. I mean, for a workshop. Right. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> item number 15, action upon recommendation from the Appointments Committee to revise the charge to the Fort Williams Charitable Trust Study Committee and to make appointments to the committee. <clears throat> the Appointments Committee is recommending the, change be ch the charge be changed to provide for nine public members. Is there a member of the previous Appointments Committee who could report on this? Uh, well, uh, there were applications for that number <coughs> that was felt by the committee, the Appointments Committee that uh, it would uh, be good for the committee to have the, this number of people. And so I'd like to uh, just right. change the charge in that respect. Madam Chair, a pet, yes. I also serve on, on the Appointments Committee. And <coughs> we, this really speaks to uh, what Joe Groff was talking about, the people coming forward and uh, volunteering their time. Because we have uh, nine people who have really outstanding qualifications to sit on this committee. And it just was not possible to screen any of these people out. And we felt that it behooved us to increase the number of seats on this committee. And again, it, as it speaks to the volunteerism of, of the people in this town. And, and um, you know, we want to thank everybody for coming forward. And most of the applications came in over our website. Yes, that was very uh, interesting. Over what? <clears throat> so. Has, you know, I think this has to be done in two parts. I think first we have to change the charge, and then we can make the appointments. appointments. So I, well, I, yeah, okay. I move that we change the, uh, the charge um, of the Fort Williams Charitable Trust Study Committee um, to provide for nine public members. Second. second. I will leave it to the clerk to determine exactly who gets the second, <laughs> because I can't do it. Um, is there any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Part two would be to uh, the, for the appointments committee, whoever that person is, to make the motion to accept the nine people who applied for that job. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we um, appoint the, all the nine people who have uh, stepped forward to serve on this committee. Could, could she enumerate those people? You want to read them? Could you read, the could names, you read them, please? Read them, please? Names. Okay, Jack Keneally, Penelope uh, Swartz, Peter Montano, John Sears, Jeff Van Fleet, Richard Kurtz, Cindy Landrigan, Bridget Lerner Kingsbury, Janet McLaughlin. Thank you. No second, second that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. It's unanimous. <clears throat> Item number 16. Action upon a request to extend the service period of the Historic Preservation Study Committee and to allocate previously appropriated funds in the amount of $5,000 from the Planning Board Special Studies account for an historic architectural evaluation. Henry? Uh, Madam Chairman, the uh, uh, Historic Preservation Study Committee has had uh, several meetings, and we've had a public meeting. And uh, this is going to take a lot more time than uh, had originally been planned, I think. And uh, therefore, we've come before the council to ask for an extension of time until the end of the year. That uh, uh, Maureen 
uh, has been our uh, staff person. She's done a crackerjack job in uh, moving this along, but it takes a long time. Uh, we also have uh, this amount of money, this $5,000 from the planning board, which has not been used, which has been appropriated, which would have no effect on the budget. It, it's there. And um, the committee, uh, some part of the committee, there was some sentiment that the, that the uh, uh, $5,000 should not be spent until we had tried to uh, better identify some of the properties. On the other hand, uh, this would be used for an expert to identify these historical properties in the town. And uh, that was the vote of the majority of the committee. So we bring that before the council, and uh, I would make the, the motion as chairman of that committee that, uh, that the, it, we extend the service period of the Historic Preservation Study Committee uh, and to allocate previously appropriated funds in the amount of $5,000 from the Planning Board Special Studies account for a historical uh, architectural evaluation. And if you have some specific questions, I'm sure that Maureen uh, O'Mara would be happy to uh, answer them about such a person uh, doing a, a, a study of this nature on uh, historic evaluation, historic architectural evaluation of various properties in the town. I need a second. Second. To have a clarification on the motion. Yes. The time limit of the, the, the extension. At the end of the year. <clears throat> it's going from now, which was going to be report this summer, I believe, right? July or something like that, sure. to June. June. Oh, to June from Jan to January. I just like that to be in the motion that it's going to be a six-month extension. That's all. Okay. So right. December 30th. Well, you mentioned December 31st. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that all right with the seconder? Second. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion for item number 17, request to enter into executive session to discuss land acquisition slash dispos disposition matters. I'd also like to caution the uh, members here in the audience and members of the public that we do not anticipate taking any votes of any kind after this or during this session so that the video people can oh, conclude. No? No. <laughs> no? All right. I'm assuming we may come back into session shortly. Yes, five minutes. Yeah. But you're, you're talking about the items that are coming up afterwards? No, no on this side. On, on the land acquisition item. It's recommended that we come, if we approve it, the, if we prove action, if we take action, yeah. that we come back in the public session okay. and take that action. Yeah. Also, I have a question before yes. we enter executive session. Um, I know Cheryl's here for our uh, Portland Headlight Trustees mm -hmm. meeting. We could do that. How, yeah, uh, if, I don't know how long the, the executive session is no, going to take. No, but we take it out of I order. I'd soon take, you know, take um, the, the Portland Headlight and Thomas Jordan first for the while she's here rather than hold her up Makes if we get sense. involved in some discussion. Yep. Yep. So if we could, I think we have to maybe adjourn. Right. Let's suspend the rules. Or how do we do this? Uh, I think you suspend the, you rules, suspend to the rules. To take it out of order. To take it out of order. Well, well it's I not really part of the agenda, though. Yeah. We could add These two the items. Agenda. They're okay. a separate trust board let's, of trustees meeting, aren't they? Yes. To elect the officers of each let's, one of them. Let's adjourn this meeting. Mm -hmm. And reopen for, you're all here, right? You're, you're going to do it all, Cheryl? The whole, the whole thing? All right, let's adjourn this meeting. Do we need to Be vote? Before you do, I'd just make, I'd like to make a note to remind all the people who are watching that this uh, season is tick season, that our dog has been bitten by a tick. There is Lyme disease uh, around, and uh, so be very careful of ticks on your pets because they're all over the town. Just wanted to make that a reminder for the folks who have pets. All right, maybe we won't do adjourn then. We're, what we're thinking is that we'll just take up these two items and not adjourn until after we do these two items. Yeah. All right. Cheryl, would you like to? Uh, I'm not sure we can do that. I think, yeah. I think because, we can. No, because these are separate, these are separate trustees, mm -hmm. separate bodies. Right, this is usually not done. Um, I would although it's, it's, it's public, it's not by the council. What you might want to do is to move into second to go into executive session following um, the meetings of the Portland Headlight Trustee Board and Thomas Jordan Board. Right. Okay. So okay. I will make that motion. Okay. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded to Council go into executive session. Following, following the, the meeting of the Fort Williams, the headlight, the headlight, and the Thomas and the Jordan Thomas Jordan Trust, Trust. discussion. And Thank we, you. Are we going to stay on the air for these two meetings? We could. That would be fine for the public. I think it'd be great. All those in favor? I guess. I'm not sure what we're doing, but okay. Yeah, you, we'll explain it. Okay. We're going to stay on the air for this, um, Cheryl. I have the, my minute, there it is. I think we, we need to convene the, um, the trustees, the board of the, the Jordan, Thomas Jordan Trust. Are we going to do the Thomas Jordan Trust first? Okay. That's the one that's listed. Yep. Who here, is it all the past counselors are on that trust? All the all the time. Previous count yeah. counselors, and I know the two new ones. And well, what we need to do is, well, you're automatically the chairman. Right. Um, what we need to do is elect, the, elect the other mm -hmm. people and to take up any business. If, are we going to get a report from you at all, or do we need anything from you? Don't really need anything. It's my understanding that the meeting was yeah. only to well, this is one. Off. This is one. Yeah. I mean, I can give you the update, but. Um, mm -hmm. The meeting was to let drop. There's two separate ones. I think you're talking about this one, and this is the one that's on first on the agenda. Oh, are we doing the Jordan Trust first? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, Madam Chairman, I will move to elect Penny Carson as chair. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. I will move to elect John McGinty as vice chair. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, there's one more. We, we move to a point. Um, um, yeah, John McGinty already is um, serving till June of 2001, and so move to uh, Jack Roberts on from until June 2002. Okay. And? Ruth Watson is already serving to June 2000. Okay. Madam Chair, could we just clarify the people who may be watching that the, the terms for the Thomas Jordan Trust are three-year three -year terms? Mm-hmm. Staggered, yeah. Right. It's been moved in. Second. Second. Thank you. It's been <laughs> I am really out of the sink here. It's been moved and seconded that we, as <clears throat> we follow the recommendations of the appointments. Penelope Carson is chairman. Uh, John McGinty is vice chairman. And that John McGinty served till, two, what is it, 2001. Jack Roberts served until 2002 of a three year term. And Ruth Watson is presently serving till 2000 of her three year term. All those in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. All right, now we'll move on to. The, we um, one, there, more, we one more, more, oh. one more question. With, oh, yes. I think the uh, manager has recommended that we authorize him to consult an investment advisor regarding the investment of 50% of the trust assets and for the investment advisor to make a recommendation to trustees regarding the investment of the trust assets. All right. Are you making that? Is that a motion? Yes. Second. Very fast. It's I would just add that the, the reason for this, for those who may not know, is that most most of our assets, our town assets, have to be um, placed in certain types of bonds, um, which are generally lower um, yielding than others. But the trustee is a separate um, financial entity, um, exists under um, a different set of rules, so that we can invest some of the money in more or higher yielding mm -hmm. um, investment uh, instruments. And so that's what we'd like to explore with this. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we recommend to the town manager that he, <clears throat> that he consult an investment advisor regarding the investment of 50% of the trust assets and for the investment advisor to make a recommendation to the trustees regarding uh, his in, uh, advice on these investments. All those in favor? Thank you. It's unanimous. I'm yeah. of adjournment of the Thomas Jordan 
trust trustees committee. Go ahead. Okay. I will move to convene the um, museum at Portland Headlight trustees meet. Is that us? Yeah. Okay. So second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. That can we we convene the what is the regular the real name? Board of Directors. The Board of Directors of the Museum at Portland Headlight. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Thank you. We're ready. The following, who's going to make these? I was, John McGinty. I was going to make them. Um, the council chair is automatically the president of the Museum Corporation. I make the following motion that we appoint Henry Berry as vice president, Cheryl Parker as secretary, Deborah Lane as assistant secretary, Michael McGovern as treasurer, and Barbara Ray as assistant treasurer. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the slate is presented by Councillor McGinty be accepted. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. None opposed? Now we, have now we can have the report, huh? <laughs> we have. We're open for business. <laughs> Report, but um, <laughs> but that that's okay. Um, all the news is good, of course, and this looks like another wonderful season for tourism. Uh, when we opened in April, we opened very strong. There were no days that were slow, which is very nice for the volunteers. And I am projecting um, the projected budget uh, income for the museum for the year ending June 30th, 99, was $33,000. And I'm really, I'm projecting 38. We reached the 33 by the end of May. Mm -hmm. And we'll easily do another $5,000 in the month of June. The anticipated for the, muse for the shop for the year ending June 30th, 1999, um, was $325,000. I'm anticipating 380,000, and it will probably be 380,000 plus. Mm. So um, that's an extraordinary accomplishment due to our fine tourists and uh, my fine volunteer staff. And I think that everyone who takes part in the success of, of this organization should be commended. Um, it's, it's a success story all around. It's great for the town, it's great for the economy, and, uh, and it's great for the people who show the town off, the volunteers down there. And that's, um, that's all the good news. <laughs> it's like to have great reports with good news all the time. Are there any questions from the council to Cheryl? That's right. It's hard to ask any questions on that <laughs> when you get a positive report like that. Thank you very much, You're Cheryl. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for the wonderful job. I would uh, move adjournment of the uh, Board of Trustees of the yeah. Portland Headlight Museum. Board of Directors. Of the Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the meeting of the Board of Directors of the Museum at Portland Headlight uh, close. And all those in favor? Thank you very much. John. Okay, I move we enter. <laughs> <laughs> we'll enter into executive session yeah. to discuss um, land acquisition disposition uh, matter and, uh, well, I'll, I'll make that motion. And it is anticipated we may come into session okay. to take further action. Second. I second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we go for a short executive session. We may come back to make any, some votes after that, so um, I guess you'll have to stay there for a few more minutes. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Thank you. We have a one and a half minute break to get to the back room. Oh. So that those people don't have to stay much longer. Mm -hmm. We're coming back here, right? Yep. Can leave most of it. Item 17. No. Where is this item?
that meeting that's going on back there? Uh, I think that's... What? Oh, is it? Oh, I like it when they're laughing. Oh no, it's too hot in here. I'll obtain a motion to... Madam Chair, I move that we exit executive session and re-enter public session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we return to the public section session from the executive session. All those in favor? Thank you. Now I'll entertain a motion on um, this item. Madam Chairwoman, I'd like to move that the town council approve the sale of the lot at 11 Park Circle, Cape Elizabeth. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the sale as presented to us at the lot at 11 Park Circle. Um, any, any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Is that our last item on the agenda? Move we adjourn. Mm -hmm. You want to move that or you want to second it, Henry? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that the meeting number one of the new council year be adjourned. Thank you very much and good night to everybody. I hope we didn't delay you too much, those watching on TV. Did everybody see the bottom? Uh, right under the adjournment section, the last sentence. See that meeting note? Oh, yeah. Henry and John. Is that okay? Yeah. You have the meeting date on July 12th, 7:30. Did you see that in the last item? Yes. Okay. Under that, under the, under this adjournment, the very last item is a meeting date. Is that cleared for your calendar? Oh, I didn't look at it. Hey there, sir. See it? Fine. Yeah. Fine with me. Okay. Okay. July 12th is the. It's a regular meeting, John. Oh, regular meeting. It would just be at six o'clock. It, yeah, facilities. Six o'clock. Facilities 2000? Yep. Okay. So the workshop at 6. 6. And they call by the 7. Yep. yep. Okay, we just wanted to make sure that everybody had that. Oh, and also I wanted to follow up on something that Jack said about something in the memory of, of John Civilly. I've been approached about several different things. Yeah. Are you off? Huh?